Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. Let's check out what I'm working on today. For the first DIY, I'm starting with this art piece that I found on clearance at my most recent trip to Hobby Lobby, and I only paid $3.99. I didn't like the design, so I'm going to cover that up using a flower sack towel from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to make a pretty design on the flower sack towel, but before I get to that, I need to cover up the original painting with some white chalk paint. Then I measured to see how big a piece of the flower sack towel I needed to cut out to cover where the original artwork was. And I cut a piece of the flower sack towel to those dimensions. Now flower sack towels are supposed to be a little wrinkly and crinkly, but you do want to get out those uh, creases that are folded into the towel. So go ahead and get your iron out and do just a little light ironing and it helps to use the steam setting. Now that you've got a smooth canvas to work with, I like to fray the edges because it just makes it look homespun and natural. The next step is dyeing the fabric and I like to use what I already have on hand. If you have writ dye, that would probably be more permanent, but this isn't going into the washing machine anyway. So I'm just using some uh, food coloring and I mixed up some really hot water with about three drops of red food coloring and I shook it up in a sprayer bottle that's from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to spray the middle part of the flower sack towel because I didn't want my frayed edges to be dyed too. And I wanted just a light dye and not as dark as if you were to dunk this in a bowl of dyed water. Then leave the piece of fabric to dry and you can help it along using a hair dryer. I certainly did because I'm not that patient. <laughs> For the design, I used these self-adhesive stencils from the Dollar Tree. I thought that they would go really well with the pink color and the idea of what I wanted this to look like. When I stuck them down, I overlapped the edges a little bit and that was to prevent any paint to go in between the stencils making a line. I'm using white craft paint and a little round sponge pouncer brush that came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to lightly pounce this brush over the entire stencil. Then I removed all of the stencils and moved them down under the last one that I painted on. And since they had paint on them, I used a paper towel to put over them so that I could press them down firmly to stick to the fabric. And repeated the painting process onto the last two stencils. I dried the paint with my hair dryer and it was ready to attach. I used this clear craft glue from the Dollar Tree to stick the fabric down and it worked perfectly because it was clear and it didn't leave behind a stiff hard line. 
If you don't have any artwork that you can rework like this thing that I found at Hobby Lobby, I imagine that this would be really cute inside of a picture frame with a white background. In the next DIY, I'm using these two little tags that I got from the Dollar General store. They were only $1 a piece. And they're really cute if you wanna use them for Valentine's decorations, but I'm gonna sacrifice them and make them into something I can leave in my house year round. The paint on the designs was a little raised, so I decided to sand them down a little bit to make the surface smooth because of course I'm going to paint over them. I removed their jute string hangers, but I only set them aside. I didn't throw them away because they had wooden beads on them and we can reuse those. I painted the front and back side of both tags with Rust-Oleum Linen White chalk paint. And the coolest thing about painting the back side of these tags or any of the like MDF board signs that you get at the Dollar Tree is one coat of the chalk paint and if you don't try to get it absolutely everywhere in any every area then it'll naturally look distressed and really nice for one of the tags i'm going to use a technique that i've never tried before i'm going to stick a napkin a paper napkin with a cute design on it and, and i love ticking stripes so these napkins were the perfect pick for me and they they came from Target actually they're hearth in hand they were only three dollars and 99 cents for the pack but anyway I'm going to stick it down to one side of one of these tags using saran wrap so the first thing to do is to cut your napkin down to where it will cover the tag with some overhanging the edges then pull apart the layers of the napkin this napkin had two layers and there be a printed layer and a white layer, so get rid of the white layer. Then cut a piece of saran wrap and cover the tag. And I tried to smooth it out so that there were no wrinkles. And then after that, lay the napkin on top. The next step is to use your iron to stick this down to the wooden tag. But I got nervous that that hot iron <laughs> and saran wrap was going to make a melted sticky mess on my iron. And this is the actual iron I use on my clothes. So I didn't want to ruin my iron and make a mess. So I trimmed around the edges so that maybe the iron wouldn't come in contact with that saran wrap. Now, the moment of truth, I put the iron down and I didn't know what temperature setting I should have the iron on. So I just had it on its max setting <laughs> like I always do. And so I ran this iron over the napkin and guys, it works. It actually sticks the napkin down to the wooden tag and it comes out a lot crisper and nicer than if you were to use Mod Podge. But I have to say I should have not trimmed the saran wrap back because when you put the iron down, that saran wrap shrinks up underneath that napkin. And so I would have been just fine to leave it like it was. Now, I'm not kidding. I'm going to use this technique a lot from now on. I really liked it that much. And to get the excess off around the edge, just simply use your sanding block and you like your stuff distressed anyway, this is perfect. I got a little sanding happy there on the left side, but it'll be okay if that part's going to be hidden with this other tag that's going to go on top. For the tag that goes on top, I did a little extra sanding just to make it smooth and to distress around the edges even more. 
Now you have all kinds of options for lettering. You could hand print something, you could use a Cricut, you could use the scribble on the back with a pencil and transfer a design that way. I'm going with stickers today because that's just the easiest thing to do. And these came from the Dollar Tree. And of course this thing is huge, but I love the saying on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut it all apart and use most of the words. The only word I'm not gonna use is pray because it's on that big giant ribbon. So I'm gonna use all the other words out of this wall decoration, sticker decoration. And then I'm going to paint in the word pray smaller so that it fits in with my other words. Now we need to open up the hole in the tag on the bottom with the stripes because we put the napkin over the hole and we need that. So I'm going to use this tiny little screwdriver set from the Dollar Tree to poke through the napkin so that we get our hole back. And I love this little screwdriver set for a buck 25 at Dollar Tree. You should pick one up because they are the perfect size for getting out those teeny tiny little screws that tend to be in a lot of things now. Now I'm bringing back the hangers that I originally had cut off of these tags and I'm not going to use the pieces of jute string, but I am going to use the white beads. I'll put the red ones aside to use for something else. I've got my own jute twine that I'm going to string these up with and I'm going to use the scotch tape method to tape up one end of the jute string so that it is easily threaded through beads and through these small little holes in the tags. So I strung them up and tied them together and cut off the excess and pulled the beads down toward the top. The final step is to hot glue the tags together. And so this is totally customizable and something that you can have out in your home year round now. I love to go to Goodwill and look for things that are so cute but could just use a little updating. So the last time I went, I saw this little teapot and oh, it's just so cute. I loved it, it was only $2. The only problem with it, it had some outdated ducks on the front. So I brought him home and cleaned him up. I wanted the teapot to have a textured look. And I've done the baking soda and paint technique before and I didn't really want to do that again. So I found out, did you know that you can get a nice textured look by just pouncing a sponge brush? And this is the same one that I used in the earlier DIY with the stencil. Just pounce a little round sponge brush all over the object and you're going to get a textured effect. And of course I'm using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. The flower combination are these dahlias and these little glitter green berries that are both from the Dollar Tree. And whenever I do floral arrangements, whenever possible, I try to leave them on their stems and just bend the stems up to fit inside whatever container I have. This way, if I want to reuse them for another project later, they're already intact. And I just loved giving new life to this little old teapot.
Do you ever shop at Tuesday mornings? Well, I like to go as often as I can because sometimes you find the neatest stuff in their craft aisle. And I found this thing. It's a pom-pom maker. It was only $3.99. And I love a cute little pom-pom. So I'm going to try it out today. The best thing about this gadget is I finally get to use a lot of that Dollar Tree yarn that I've been hoarding up because goodness knows, they have the cutest colors and I can't pass it by even though I have no idea how to crochet or <laughs> do any yarn work. So the thing about this gadget is it has these arms that swing out. And you take your yarn and wrap a lot of it <laughs> around these arms. And the more that you wrap yarn, like the more yarn you use, the fluffier and denser your pom-pom will be. When you feel like you've got enough, just cut your yarn and it has a little place where the yarn can be held while you wrap the other arm. <laughs> yarn and arm, I'm getting so tongue-tied. <laughs> When you get the second arm all wrapped up, then cut your yarn and stick it in the holder just like the other side. Then you cut all around the outside pieces of yarn. And that was really fun. That was, there was a satisfying effect to that. Um, the next thing is to take your yarn and you thread it through both of the arms in the middle. So imagine like if you had an Oreo cookie and you wanted to wrap a piece of yarn around and break the two cookie pieces apart by dragging the yarn through the middle of the cream. That's pretty much what you're doing here. You just put the yarn around the middle and tie it as tight as you can. I used a double knot. Then you're supposed to open up the arms and you're able to take the gadget apart, pulling the two halves apart. Then you can get your pom-pom out and put your two halves back together so it's ready to make another. And you can fluff your pom-pom and give it a little haircut if you want to, cause, oh, that's kind of fun too, to cut off those little long pieces. Or you can cut this down to where it is so dense and fluffy. It's, this is a really fun gadget, y'all. If you see this out, I recommend that you get it. Well, as soon as I said that I recommend you look for it if you're out, then I thought, well, what the heck? If <laughs> we have technology, I went and found it on the Amazon store. It's not the same brand, but it is a pom-pom maker. And this set makes different sizes and it comes with the yarn. So I'll put this in my description box below if you want to get one to play with too. I can see these little pom-poms hanging off of Easter baskets or any of your organizing baskets or to use in place of fringe on the corners of pillows. Wouldn't that be cute? Now let's take a look back at all our cute DIYs today. I want to thank you for choosing to spend time with me today. I hope you had fun watching the video, got some good ideas and inspiration. If you want to see some more DIYs, I've got a link right here for you to click to have more fun. And until next time, bye.